Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Even more special than usual. <laughs> Today's comes to you courtesy of Exit 23 Games. Uh, I was contacted by them recently and they very kindly offered uh, to sort me out with some additional equipment. And as a result, I have a boom, I have a really nice mic hanging over me. Uh, I hope that you guys can tell the difference. It certainly made this much easier for me to do, so I really appreciate it. Uh, if you've not heard of them, Exit 23, they do a range of uh, paints and miniatures, which I am going to show off at some point, uh, fairly soon. <laughs> but today's is going to be a Commissar. Now, Commissars are a funny old one because they are predominantly black, and then all of these other colors get involved. And people quite commonly ask, how can you make black look interesting? So I thought, well, let's go for it. Let's have some fun with this and uh, do a model that I wouldn't normally. Um, I tend to shy away from doing like HQ units and characters and stuff like that on the channel uh, because they take a little bit longer. Uh, but there are some very simple techniques in this. Important is brush control and dry brushing. So I would recommend if you've got some extra bits and pieces here and there, have a little bit of a go, you know, practicing keeping a point on your brush and how much your paint flows. That is going to be two big uh, parts that are going to make this much easier. But without any further mucking around, I'm going to list all of the paints in the description below. Let's get started. So to nobody's great surprise, because we are painting a black miniature, I've gone ahead and primed him with black. I've used Army Painter's Matte Black for that. Uh, just a couple of passes, that does the job. Now what you can do from here would be to, you know, paint it up, let's just say normally, where you would highlight the jacket, highlight the trousers, so on and so forth. But we're looking for quick and easy. So what we're going to do first of all is grab some Corvus Black, this happy little chappy here. And we're going to go ahead and use a technique called overbrushing. Now overbrushing is similar, there we go, to uh, dry brushing, except we want just a little bit more paint on our brush when we do it. So you see, rather than sort of relentlessly making sure there's no paint on my brush, I just want enough there that when I drag across the model, I'm going to get some left behind. I don't want it in the recesses, but for those big flat areas of black, this little bit of Corvus black is going to give us somewhere that we can come down from. Because uh, if we shade black, we don't get any change, <laughs> you see? So this doesn't take too long, just a couple of quick passes and that'll do the job. Now that doesn't show up terribly well on camera, unfortunately, <laughs> but uh, I guarantee you there's a little bit of gray black to that. Just adds a little bit of visual interest and it gives us somewhere that we can come down from. Now, obviously if you throw a black shade over a flat black, nothing's gonna happen, but Corvus Black introduces just a little bit of variation in color. Now speaking of, what we're gonna do next is go to a dry brush and we're gonna use Dawnstone uh, you can use the layer paint for this, but I'm going to use the dry, uh, mostly because it is a little easier. What I'm going to do first of all is prep my brush. And one of the questions that comes up quite regularly, uh, well, not questions so much as statements, is people saying, oh, dry brushing isn't working, um, it looks ugly, or I'm getting big ugly streaks or what have you. The easiest solution when it comes to dry brushing, there's two. Less paint, less pressure. All right. If you think you've taken all of the paint off your brush, you're probably not far off the mark. So once you reckon your brush is prepped up, just flick along the edge of your base and you really do not want to be leaving much behind at all. So that's pretty much ideal. What we're going to do then is just lightly flick along and we want to leave just a little bit of Dawnstone to start picking the edges of detail. So particularly his jacket, uh, we're not much fussed if we hit things like his face and all that, but his jacket, his boots, what you want to be doing is crossing areas of detail. So for example here, if I were to go up and down on the model, I'm going to fill in some of that detail. What I want to do instead is go across it. And you'll notice this does take two or three passes, you know, before we start actually seeing a result, but that's good. Better that we have to go over it a few times and build up the color than to go over it once and get those big ugly lines that you're worried about. So let's go around and I'm going to do a couple of passes on all of the black details, most importantly, and we'll come back and have a look at that once that's done. 
Now we might look a little bit chalky and grey after that, but honestly, that's what we're going for. At the moment, this is the result we want. Remember that we're always sort of building on top of these things. Now I've got here one of my makeup brushes. Uh, these are an absolutely <laughs> stellar investment. Get yourself a pack of really cheap makeup brushes off of Amazon or in store somewhere. Uh, what I want this for particularly is that it has very soft bristles. So when I'm going to go over this model again, I want to leave just a dusting behind. I do not want much paint at all. I've got long beard grey. All right, and we're going to do exactly the same thing again of prepping up our brush. And then very important, we want to dry brush along the edge of the base to get an idea of what we're going to leave behind. And that looks ideal. Uh, you may not even see it show up on camera, but what I want here is the very high points, uh, particularly on things like his boots, the creases in his trousers, peak of his cap. So if we flip him around here, uh, I'm going to go up against the detail. And you'll see after a few passes, I start getting slightly sharper line. I might need a little more paint in my bristles, but like I said, always better to have to add more than to put too much on. So I'm going to go around and just pick off a few areas where I want a really sharp crease. And I'm going to use long beard gray to do it. Now, after a couple of passes of long beard gray, we can finally see him on camera, but he does look a little chalky in some areas. So what I'm going to do is I've gone back to my Corvus black. I've got a brush and all I'm going to do is I've thinned this out a little bit more than I normally would. You'll see it doesn't cover perfectly when it goes on. What I'm going to do is just get some areas that I don't want quite so much uh, chalkiness, let's say. So on his boot here, for example, I'm just going to add a little bit of Corax, uh, Corvus Black. I keep wanting to call it Corax Black. Uh, <laughs> But any areas that you think you might have gone overboard with the dry brushing, you can just flatten those back out with some thinned down Corvus Black. So a sleeve here is probably a good candidate. You see we've got this nice highlight following the shape of a sleeve, but there's a little bit much there. There you go. We can use our base color to tidy up our dry brush highlights. So anywhere that you think that's maybe a little bit much dry brushing, go back with your base coat and you can tidy it up. As you can see, it doesn't take much to sharpen those up. It will still look dry brushed if you peer at it up close, but those highlights are going to look quite nice on the table. And for a nice easy effect, hey, there you go, practice your dry brushing. And what we're going to do next is we're going to go and introduce a little bit of different color to the model so far. Uh, most folks I see when they're painting leather, they like to do sort of a blue black effect with some really sharp highlights. And I like that too. I think that looks quite cool. But if we just did that over all of the black, then it would all look like the same material. And we want to introduce a little bit of visual interest here. So what I'm going to do, his boots and his jacket, we're going to count as leather. So I'm going to use Drakenhof Nightshade over the top of that to give me that blue-black effect and tint our highlights. Then when we look at the trousers and his shirt here, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade instead because I want a little bit of a brown effect while still shading and introducing a bit of depth to the Corvus Black we've used. So let's have a look at what that looks like. Now when painting a large area like his jacket, I'd suggest a large uh, shade brush, sorry, medium shade brush would be the right idea. Uh, unfortunately, mine has seen a great deal of action and it doesn't really keep a point anymore. <laughs> so any old uh, large brush really will do the job for this. But as you can see, as we put this on, this just subtly changes the, I guess, hue is the color, uh, the, the word. Tell you what, don't ask me these things. I'm not a scientist, but <laughs> when it comes to painting, this is all we need to do. So you see, this will change this up a little bit. So I'm going to go over the whole, uh, all of the leather areas now in my Drakenhof Nightshade. Now that might look quite subtle, but if you can get a look at the difference between the flat black sword and the back of his cap there, I think that really helps to illustrate what we're going for. We have got a subtle change in what is clearly a black coat, but it's not boring and flat and so on. And all it took, a couple of dry brushes and a shade. What we'll do now is I'm going to put the Agrax Earth shade over his trousers and his shirt, and we'll get a different color on that as well. Now, once more of those shades are dry, we're onto the red details. 
I would suggest your red and your skin are going to be easier to base coat first because you'll see a lot of his little dealy boppers, you know, his accessories and what have you, are over top of the red bits. So let's do those first. Now, when I were a lad, there was not so much red on these Commissar's uniforms. Like, if you go onto the uh, web store, you look at the Officio Perfectus Commissar, half of them's bleeding red now. You know, the turn backs on his coat and his, his collar and all that. It's all this nice burgundy, which is cool, but I think it looks a little bit much for what I want to do. So what I'm going to do instead is stick to the old ways, if you will. I've got here my corn red. Just a little bit of water in there, as usual. And all we're going to do is cover over. I'm going to do just his sash in this red, and then we'll go probably get some um, a fist on red and do some trim. Um, I like my commissars, like personally, this is a purely personal choice. I like them to look dark and sinister and they're, they're bad guys, you know? <laughs> so I don't like a lot of bright color on them. But of course, uh, if you want to follow the guide that is online, uh, you know, on the web store, what I suggest is you're probably going to find it easiest if you paint this dude in two parts. Uh, don't glue his top half of his body to his legs, and then you'll find it much easier to get up under his jacket and paint all that. Uh, but whatever the case, I'm going to do a couple of coats of corn red on the sash now. Now, as soon as I said that, I've gone and made a liar of myself. <laughs> and uh, you'll see I've gone and painted the inside of his cap, a uh, little bit of the trim on his jacket, and on the back here, you'll notice that there's uh, sort of a molded couple of stripes on the back. I would suggest, if you're looking for a quick way to paint this, to stick to painting just the stripe in the center. Um, although you can paint the, uh, the two stripes either side if you would prefer. It's really a matter of personal choice. Anybody wants to tell you that you're painting your 41st Millennium Friendly Fire incident the wrong way? Um, you know, <laughs> go ahead. It doesn't matter, does it? Uh, so what I've got now, a little bit of Mephiston Red, and we're going to do some slightly brighter trim on his clothing. So using just the side of my brush to get to some of these areas, I'm going to do a trim on his shirt, and I'll also do the trim on his trousers in this same color. Now don't forget too, his collar is actually visible from uh, the front of the miniature here. So do try and get in there too, I think that'll look much better if you do. If you have any little whoops moments along the way, remember you can always go back, grab your Corvus Black, or even a flat black, and just fill in any areas that you might have splashed with too much red. Now I'm going to stick to my small layer brush here, and we've got Bugman's Glow. I'm going to base coat his face. Now ordinarily I wouldn't use such a small brush you know, to put down a base coat like this, but because we are going to get quite close to some areas that we've already painted, I want to be fairly careful with this. So let's go over it once, let it dry, and then we'll come back and give it a second quick coat of Bugman's Glow. Now when it comes time to paint yours, don't do what I always do when painting this model, and forget that he has a hand. <laughs> Just because he's got the big bionic arm up there, uh, he has got a natural hand holding onto his sword. So remember that. I've got Avalanche Sunset, and we're going to paint in all of the yellowy details. Now there's a few of these. Uh, so just very quickly spotting the end of his uh, sash there. Now it's up to you whether or not you do the, the braiding or frogging, whatever you want to call it, on his epaulets in this color. Uh, I would suggest it's probably easier than worrying about doing it like a, a gold or something. Because uh, we are going to shade over it and it will look a lot more natural. Obviously, he's not going to have bright golden or bright yellow epaulets. So take your time. You'll probably find with yellow, you do need to come back and do a couple of coats in some areas. But don't worry too much if that is the case. Now, it's okay. You can say it. That does look dreadful. <laughs> it is a little bit Ronald McDonald's honor guard, isn't it? But you've seen the finished product, so trust me, hold the faith. What I've got now is my Iron Hand Steel, and what we're going to cover over is all of the metallic details. So even anything that's going to be gold or brass or what have you later, 
just go ahead and pop a coat of this on. Uh, you will find this probably covers pretty well with one coat. Uh, my miniature here, he has been primed for a little while, so I will probably need to do a second coat in some areas, but just go nuts, you know, everywhere that is going to be metallic. So particularly as well on the little dealy boppers on his chest here, you'll probably want to swap to a smaller brush. But take your time now, and away you go. Now at this stage we can start to see him coming together. Now honestly, if there is a boring part, oh my goodness, it's that one. <laughs> it takes forever. Um, you know, it is unfortunately one of those ones that you just can't skip on. Um, and it is relatively simple, it's just time consuming. I've got now Balthazar Gold. And this is, like, I love the colour, but it's not really gold, is it? It's a brassy sort of colour. So I'm just going to pick out some functional areas on some parts of his weaponry. And we'll do those in Balthazar Gold. And then we'll move on and we're going to use Retributor Armour for bits that I want to be spangly and gold. So let's finish off both of those areas. So along here, for example, this cabling is a good spot. You just want to break up some of the silver. And the reason why we've done the Iron Hand Steel first is that it provides a very good base coat for this Balthazar Gold. Ta-da! Now I'm going to go down to my small layer brush and start applying some of that Retributor Armor to the gold details. So this bit of cloth. Now then last, but by no means least, voted detail most likely to be forgotten, is this leather belt on the back of his jacket here. Uh, I'm just going to use some Rhinox Hide. Really any old color will do for this. Now it's finally time to start applying some shades. Now I'm going to use my medium layer brush for most of this because I do want quite a bit of control on where these shades are going to go. So we're going to start off with Reichland Flesh Shade, and of course we'll paint his skin with that. Then what I'm going to do is Agrax the shade over all of the yellow and red details, along with some of the gold. It's really a matter of taste, that one. And then we'll put some non oil over the metallics. Probably being a little bit generous there. Now, while most of those shades aren't dry, you can still see what a difference they make. In particular to that yellow, oh, that looks so much better. <laughs> Uh, now I've got a little bit of, uh, this is Cadian Flesh Tone, and I'm going to very carefully paint in his face while those shades are drying. Uh, I put on the Reichland Flesh Shade first, because it's the smallest area to worry about. Now what I'm going to do is apply this to most of the areas of his face, leaving only the very deep recesses. So where the shade has settled the most, oops, uh, we'll find... So, just following the contours of his face as much as possible. Don't forget he has ears. Now, following the contours of his face at first can seem quite daunting. Uh, it is a skill that takes a bit of practice. Luckily, as an Astro Militarum player, you're probably going to have about a thousand spare heads <laughs> that you can practice on. And honestly, it might sound silly, but don't be afraid to practice. Just spray some heads, just glue them to a bit of sprue, and play around, see what you like the look of. What I've got now is some Kislev flesh, and we're going to use this to highlight just the very highest points of his face. So we're going to do the tip of his nose, we'll do along his chin, bottom lip, cheekbones, anywhere you think is going to just accentuate the shape of that horrid gaunt face. Now then, over our deeper red, we're going to use Wazdaka Red as a highlight. So I've mixed in just a little bit of water, and just prepping up my brush, making sure I've got that lovely tip. What we're going to do here is just paint on some of the areas, leaving that nice deep colour in the recesses. Then finally, if you want to highlight just a little bit further, some squig orange in the very, very edges of that red detail. As you can tell, I'm concentrating because my voice goes funny. <laughs> uh, you don't need very much of this. This will just help sell the extreme edges of that red detail. 
Now from here, if you would like to do the same thing with the other red trim, a little bit of Evil Sun Scarlet will do the job. You might also find that you want to swap the way that these two reds look. Uh, you might prefer the brighter red for its sash, and the more sort of subtle, deeper red for his trim. But that's, that's up to you. Now next up is a colour I don't use very often, but I'm always glad to find I have it. This is Ungore Flesh, and this is going to help us sell the more fabric look to this yellow stuff that we've got. So what I'm going to do is just lightly, using the edge of my brush, flick. Oh goodness me, I'm terrified of doing this. There we go. Just a little bit on the edges of the yellow. And it'll go on quite bright, but it will darken down a little. And when it comes time to do the epaulettes, you see they have got a little bit of braiding in them. So rather than drawing your highlights down, in order to get some of the texture back on there, just flick across into these little lines, you see, and leave a little bit of the darker yellow underneath. Now doesn't that look better? That looks so much more natural. What I'm going to do now is I've actually got some contrast, and I've got Telesar Blue. Uh, depending on what you've got handy, you might have ultramarine blue or what have you, it really doesn't matter. It's a matter of choice here. I've mixed in probably about half and half contrast in water, and I did forget to mention I put some Corax white on the uh, plasma coils here. So what I'm going to do now is just put my contrast and water mix in here to do the plasma coils. Nice and simple like that. Uh, as well, you can do a little, if you're feeling adventurous, just dot that onto the little bobble on the end of the sword and shh, wipe most of it off with your thumb. <laughs> now from this point, ordinarily I wouldn't highlight much more, uh, but I'd rather show you guys how I would do it. So I'm going to use Liberator Gold and just flick a few little blips of this on areas of gold and even brass. And it will make the gold look a little shinier, but it will actually make the brass look a bit more functional and worn. It's a great colour, this. And then if you decide you do want to highlight any of the metal areas, a little bit of Stormhost Silver will really make those shine. So I would suggest be sparing with it, but wherever you want to really pop, just a wee dab of that. Then we'll do a quick dry brush of Dawnstone on the stones around his feet, which I totally didn't forget. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then with the addition of a fairly simple base, our Commissar is complete. And I'll be honest, I'm pretty pleased with the result. The great irony, of course, is that after all of the fuss with the black, <laughs> it's actually, it kind of disappears with all the other details on the model. But I think it's still worth knowing some of the basic principles there. Especially since if you do want to paint the Commissar differently, like, for example, you want to do the interior of his coat in that red, or swap up any of the details, you know, knowing how certain effects are achieved are going to help you decide where you want to apply them. So shout out again to Exit23 Games. Um, a, you know, massive thank you for the additional equipment, and hopefully you guys can hear the difference. <laughs> it's certainly been a great deal easier being able to do this with my hands free. You know, I can actually move my hand, hey, under the camera with that uh, with that boom there. So it's a big, big difference. As always, if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time and you all enjoy the rest of your day.